Have you ever stared at an implicit differentiation problem and thought, where do I even start? What if I told you there is a way to solve it in seconds with your calculator? That's right. No more getting stuck, second guessing or wasting time. In this video, I'm going to show you how to turn your calculator into your secret weapon for implicit differentiation. By the end, you'll be solving these problems faster and easier than ever before. Ready to level up your math game? Let's dive right in. So the question being given to us is, if x squared plus 2xy plus 3y squared is equal to 4, find the y dx. So if you have to solve this question manually, this is the answer that we are going to get. That is the y dx is equal to negative brackets open x plus y brackets close all over x plus 3y so what i'm going to teach you today is how to use it on your calculator how to solve for different implicit differentiation on your calculator so let's head straight to our steps for it and go so the first step is telling us what type the differential equation into the calculator and the question that was being given to us was what s squared plus 2xy plus 3 y squared is equal to 4 so let's move to our calculator so we have x squared plus 2 x y x y plus 3 y squared is equal to 4 This is it, the same thing, x squared plus 2xy plus 3y squared is equal to 4. So, the next step is, after that, press on shift and bracket close, so, shift, bracket close. So, after we are done, step 3 is saying that we should press on alpha y, so, alpha and our y. The fourth step is press on shift calc. So shift calc. So it's asking us what initial value of x do we want to actually use. So here we will type x is equal to 0 0.1. So we put 0 0.1 there. We put 0 0.1 there and we press equal to, to get the value of y. So we press equal to asking us for y, we press equal to again then we get what a value for y which is 1.12040453 so that is a value for y we've gotten so the seventh step is that we should what store it on the calculator that is by we pressing on shift and the rco sign the store button and we store it to a so we have been able to store our answer to a so let's press on equal to then AC. So the ninth step is telling us that we should key in the equation on the calculator again. And the equation being given to us was, if you remember, it was x squared, x squared plus 2xy, xy plus 3y squared equals 4 so we've been able to key it in the third step is that we should what's pressed on shift bracket close so shift bracket close then 12 step is alpha y so alpha y then after alpha y what we do is that we press on what shift calc we press on shift calc asking us again what initial value of x do we want this time around we are not going to use z 0 0.1 we used earlier but this is what you are going to use that is what you can see in step 13 that is you use 0 0.1 or 0 0.1 they are all the same so 0 0.1 plus 1 times 10 raised to the power negative 5 
Now, how do we get the 10 raised to the power of negative 5? We are not going to type it like this. 10 uh, raised to the power negative 5. Mm, negative 5. We are not going to type it this way. But this is how we will get our 10 raised to the power negative 5. You can see down here where I'm putting the mouse pointer. That is what we are going to get our 10 from. So we've been able to bring the times 10 to the power negative negative five so this is how we bring the negative where the mouse pointer to is we are not going to bring this sign we are going to use this where i've now placed the mouse pointer so we press on it then we bring our five equal to so asking us to solve for y we press equal to again then it gives us another value for y different from the first one so the new value for y now is what y is equal to 1.12040127 so after that uh, we will store our answer again so we will store our answer to b we will not store it to a as you see here it was supposed to be so we will store it to b so we've been able to store it to b so let's move on to the next step the next step is telling us to press equal to and also AC. So equal to then AC. Now the 15th step is the 16th step is how we are going to arrive our at our answer. So all it means is that we bring our fractional sign and we bring B minus A all over 1 times 10 raised to the power negative 5. So we get our B by pressing on alpha B minus a so alpha a then we come down then bring one times ten so this is how we get the ten make five make five then we press on equal to so when we pressed on equal to this is the final answer we arrived at that is negative zero point three five two five nine five three six five so what we do is that we will store this answer in c for us to just compare to see whether uh, the answer when we solved manually is the same thing we will get here so let's store this answer in c so we are storing it in c good so we've been able to store it in c now what we are going to do is that we are now going to check whether uh, our answer is correct so we will go back to our question the answer that we had this one we are going to type it into the calculator so we will key it into the calculator that is negative bracket open x x plus y plus y we close our bracket we come down we have x plus 3y um, plus 3y good so we've been able to key it into the calculator now let me tell you something here you can see that here I said let y equal to a the step 18 let y equal to a so that means that when we are uh, writing in the manual answer wherever we see y we will put a there so here you will come and clear the y I intentionally brought it like so that I will be able to tell you how we will do it so we will bring alpha a then go up there to where we see why we clear so alpha a then now we press our equal to sign to see when we press our equal to sign it give us what negative what 0 0.35259627 that is approximately the same thing as the answer we stored in c so what you are going to do is that what we are going to now compare this answer with the answer we stored in C to check whether they are the same thing 
when we check and they are the same thing we can see that what this is the answer what we will get for our implicit differentiation by using the calculator we can go up straight forward so let's check and see and how do we compare them to compare you press on alpha and this sign so um let me go back we press on alpha with the integral sign to bring the ratio sign then you bring your c your c are comparing it with c so how do you get your c you press on the rcl button then you go and press on your c so now after you are done with such just press equal to so for the first part this was what it brought that is negative 0 0.35259627 now let's check the c2 let's check the c the c2 give us what negative 0 0.35259536 five. that is approximately the same thing if you can check and see well the first one is what negative zero point let's leave you let's leave it in um four decimal places which is negative zero point three five two six if you have to leave it in four decimal places for the original mawa annual answer and let's check with what we use the calculator to do and see if you have to leave it in four decimal places we are getting the same thing negative what zero point three five two six so we can see what how to use the calculator to what solve for implicit differentiation in just a few seconds you finish now this is a theory question though but you can still use it to solve for what your mcqs and all that so with your mcqs what you just do is that when you go through the steps that i taught you for how you go for the calculator after you arrived at your final answer for the c you write that an answer somewhere so for your mcqs you take your option a when you are comparing them you take your option a you type the answer that they gave there into the calculator wherever you see why you put a there then you what compare the answers if they are the same then maybe the answer if, if they are the same then the answer is what a if they are not the same you move on to the next option that is option b if when you compare option b and they are the same then you can say that what option b is the final answer so you have now seen how to what solve for implicit differentiation so i will say that thank you very much for watching this video if you found this video helpful don't forget to hit the like button it really supports the channel and if you are new here make sure to subscribe so you don't miss more tips and tricks and tutorials to make learning math easier got questions or topics you want me to cover drop them in the comments below see you in the next section